When it comes to putting 3D objects in your scene, there's nothing more important than your camera orientation. If you get your camera orientation wrong, now things don't look like they actually exist in the space, and unless you know exactly where the camera was, how high off the ground it is, where it was facing, it's kind of hard to retrieve that information. In this tutorial, we are going to employ government secret math, and also an alternative approach that I will also show you, giving you the power to find the camera. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we're going to talk about that later. Here I have my scene. I took a play out of the Harry Blends playbook, where you want to have as little stuff on the screen as possible. To orient a camera, I'm going to need a camera. I want my camera to start off with a basic orientation facing downwards and a bit off the ground. Location 001, and it's going to face downwards. We go into our camera view and see the abyss, because there's no image. Background image. Which one did I choose? Is this New York City? I used to live in Boston, and this kind of looks like Boston. Are there context clues? I don't think the bus sign looked like this. Anyways, here I have my background image, and if I had an object like a torus, which is way too big, just doesn't look like it exists on the ground plane, and that's because it doesn't. The camera should kind of be oriented this way, maybe kind of looking over here, and that looks a bit better. Add another object, whoa. <laughs> it just doesn't really look aligned. It's definitely closer, but it turns out we can mathematically define what that camera rotation should be. So what I want you to notice is in this image your eye is being led all the way down here we're looking down the street let's say I take this line over here kind of going down the sidewalk and I take a line parallel to it so maybe this white marker if they did a good job then it's parallel in kind of screen space if I was to extend them so let's go all the way out over here they're gonna kind of converge like they're gonna intersect this intersection point is called the horizon the horizon isn't just like what you look at far away into the distance I mean it is but it's the place where all parallel lines converge. This is going to be a bit different depending on where your camera is, if it's pointing up, down, whatever. The horizon should be level with the ground. If my horizon vector is kind of looking like this going down the camera, that is not level or parallel with the ground at all. What we would need to do to fix this is we kind of tilt the camera up until the horizon is exactly level with the ground. Enough yabbing, let's jam. I'm going to take our camera again, point it down with unit one above the uh, ground, and I'm going to define any set of parallel lines because they they all converge towards the horizon if they are on the ground. Let's define a plane M to center. What this gives me is a single point that I can kind of position at the end of the sidewalk, E to extrude, and something like that. So this is one of our lines. Take this point and do this as well, and extrude. Note that I can make this as long as I want. It can go all the way down here. They're still going to intersect at the same point. And I could have just as well, by the way, done like this parallel line over here. They all actually converge to a line that makes up the horizon. It is the union of all the vanishing points where all the uh, parallel lines converge. And again, all I need to do is kind of extend these lines. So I'm scaling them up and find this intersection point. Take our line object and make that geometry nodes. I made a little add-on that will always maximize the thing so you can read it and we can even hide the header. I'm going to take my initial input and we need to extend it, which is exactly the same as saying scale each element. In this case, we're going to scale each edge. As I increase this, you can see we get this intersection. I need to know exactly where this point is. There's all kinds of math we can use to find this, or I'm actually going to go into the third dimension. Kind of a weird choice, but follow me here. I'm going to extrude edges such that, you know, they extrude, and I want them to kind of extrude upwards on the z-axis, so by one. Maybe even by, like, 0.1. Now we've reduced or extended our problem into the intersection of two planes. This is easier because I can add a mesh boolean, set this to intersect, and reconnect that. Initially, it's going to do nothing. Key insight, you take float, you make it exact, that will find this new intersection. And then if I were to take this and kind of compress it down, go back to two dimensions and get that point. Transform this such that it is scaled by zero. So now we actually do have this point. However, there are two of them. We've kind of like overlaid them on top of each other. Merge by distance. Looking at the spreadsheet, indeed we do have five vertices. The four original ones plus the intersection point. Something that is actually quite useful for us is if I compare our initial scaled lines versus the merge by distance, you're going to see it's only like we add a single entry to the spreadsheet. The intersection point is the one of index four. Our work is actually almost done. Node group intersecting lines. Extract that point by separating geometry. Only look at the point where the index is equal to four. We'll call that horizon. Horizons, math, math, math. 
Oh, I think it's a good time to take a break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is essentially a website suite or service that I use for my website, www.cgmatter.com, three Ws. This is where I host blend files, including for this tutorial, and there are many reasons why I would recommend using it. First of which is the asset library. You can upload any file, images, audio, whatever. They also offer digital products, but specifically they offer memberships and subscriptions, which is great because I'm trying to do this like Patreon pivot to a personal website. They have their own payment platform and essentially everything you need. If you want to quickly iterate with all kinds of designs and content, Squarespace now offers advanced AI integration, letting you quickly modify and iterate all of that good stuff. So head over to Squarespace, make a website, and when you're ready to take that website, make it live. You can use this link down below in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Math. Horizon, horizon, math, math. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here is that the vector basically from our camera to our horizon point is of course not level with the ground at all, right? It's actually just kind of going right into it, which of course makes sense because we're just kind of looking down. I need to rotate the camera such that this vector over here ends up pointing level with the ground. Take our horizon point and parent it to the camera. So now it moves with the camera. And then by rotating about the 3D cursor, we can now kind of orient this something like that should give us a pretty level line. And I can also scale the camera, which will effectively just kind of move it away from the origin. We get this, which doesn't exactly look right, but that's because we haven't defined basically this rotation, which way is it looking, maybe how high off the ground it is. I'm just going to rotate this. There is a point where this y-axis does indeed seem parallel to our lines. Moving the camera here. Rotate the y-axis. Now when I add a mesh like a torus, make sure it's kind of sitting on this ground plane, make that a bit smaller, and we go to the camera view, it's pretty much oriented perfectly. As it goes down, it kind of looks like it's maintaining the correct perspective. Same with this kind of axis. We can view this pretty well by, first of all, we're going to smooth this torus, shade smooth, and maybe put it on a ground plane. So I just want to see what this looks like in context. Initially, it's going to look something like this fine, but to see what it looks like on the actual ground, what we can do is we can take this ground and project the actual image. I'm going to project a texture by bringing in a image texture that is going to be the same image. Initially, it's going to look like this. It's going to be projected all wrong, but that fix is as easy as using a different coordinate system. The one you want to end up using is window coordinates. This is the one where it looks like we're looking into screen space. So if I connect that here, the texture is projecting correctly, no matter how we move this. Add a bit of a light source, so maybe a sun, vaguely matching the correct direction. You can tell what direction that is, by the way, by just kind of looking at other shadows in the scene. We're definitely going to want to soften the shadows, which you can do by taking the angle. Angle of zero, very harsh. Angle of 10, softer. You could even go softer. And then for the world, which is kind of the ambient light, I'm just going to brighten this up a bit. If you're seeing this kind of affects the whole scene, that's just because the backdrop isn't opaque enough. Let's make that more opaque. Now we're basically controlling kind of the harshness or the softness of the shadows bring up the sun until the seam between these kind of disappears. Another thing you can do to match this is you bring up your roughness and I believe bring down your specular just so it doesn't have as many highlights. Really the rest of it is just picking a better background but that's fine with me. Final insight is you take this, you go to your settings, you enable shadow catcher to get rid of it which actually brings it up even more. What is going on? The background, the world background is kind of showing through here. This like gray space, kind of frightening. How do we fix? We fix by going to film, we go to transparent, and now we can see through everything such that now the Taurus is finally sitting in our scene. Note that, by the way, if I was to unplug the texture, you know, you kind of get a different result. So here we're kind of matching the texture of the thing and it will, it will just look right. While we're here, let's just get the scale of this right. So if I was to add a plane, it's two meters by two meters. I'd say in our scene space, like this is about two meters. If we have a real world measurement, we can essentially scale the camera, which really just kind of moves the location further back. We do this this such that the plane kind of fits this two meters condition. From the camera view, you just kind of scale this up until it's roughly two meters. It kind of looks like we were above the ground shooting all the way down the street, almost like we were shooting from a window or something. Scale up our shadow catcher, and let's replace this little sad donut object with something a bit better. Absolutely beautiful. I need this to snap to the ground. I did make a add-on for this. I'm just going to use it, the ground part of Genie. This will just let me orient it on my scene so it's sitting nicely. We can scale it down. Uh. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna start over here, let's say. Keyframe, 90 frames down and make that our project length. It arrives over here. So now we have this cursed animation. Make that linear so it goes at a constant speed. I'm gonna take this rotation and replace it with a driver. So let's take the frame number and start by dividing it by 10. Let's see if that looks correct. No, it's rolling way too slow. Divide by five. Yeah, 
that's more what I am uh, talking about. There is a program called FSpy and like an importer into Blender. You have to drag in your image and then we're doing a vaguely similar process. And what it's doing is these horizon line calculations. Set one pair of pe parallel lines to go down the sidewalk. Pro tip, hold down shift to kind of do this magnified highlight view. And then for the X axis, I have to do the same parallel line thing, but in the other direction. Turn on XY grid floor. And if we look at all these statistics on the right, I believe we can enable focal length. Right now it's guessing it's a 50 millimeter. That is only possible if we know the actual camera we were using because we care about the sensor width. Take this, we export it as a, no, we save as, as an FSpy file. And then if you have the FSpy add-on, you can go to file, import, FSpy, and find the thing. And you can see it does a fairly good job immediately bringing in the camera to where it could have been, etc. What is the point of this tutorial? Well, one, it's to show you that FSpy is a tool that exists. But second of all, I thought it was cool to talk about the math of the horizon and how parallel lines eventually converge. And also super useful is how do you find the intersection between two edges or even two curves? Useful for road intersections and all kinds of geo nodes nonsense. Let me know what you think about this new format. It should save me editing on the flip. We'll see. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.